I'm Dr. Tom, and you want to be a guest speaker aboard cruise lines and get an opportunity to travel the world with some very inexpensive travel. I'm on, presently on a cruise ship of a major cruise line in the Indian Ocean. I'll be giving talks on the cultures and history of India, Malaysia, and Singapore on this particular cruise. There's different kinds of guest speakers or arrangement speakers. On this cruise, I'm a special interest speaker. Your topics can be relevant to the itinerary, as mine is, or they can be general interest, such as lighthouses, Caribbean pirates, or on nature and wildlife. So how do you get these jobs? There's two different ways. Some cruise lines will contract with you independently. Other cruise lines use an agency. So you would contact one of these agencies via email or phone call or through the website on some of the cruise lines. We'll give you an email address to contact the cruise line directly. Types of things, some topics that you think would be of interest to the cruise line passengers. Sell yourself on your public speaking experience. If you have cruise experience, that's so much the better. Where you've gone on cruise ships what ports you've been to, what cultures you've visited, or as part of your professional life. What kind of field experience do you have? I'm a retired college professor teaching world history and world culture, and I have a lot of topics that I've taught in college that are of interest to cruise lines that they feel are of interest to the passengers. Cruises such as this one, we have six days at sea and the talks are 40 to 45 minutes long with a 10 to 15 minute question and answer and meet and greet after each of your talks. Many cruise lines prefer that you use Microsoft PowerPoint or a similar tool for delivering your presentations. They like lots of graphics, lots of pictures, some details about your topics. Use very few words on your slides. 20 to 25 words is more than enough. They want you to do all the talking. Reading from notes is a no-go. Practice your material ahead of time. A brief look at the slides to remind you of what the topic is, and some details is fine. But don't be reading from your notes. Here we are in a typical venue. This particular theater is large and has a thousand seats. Some ships will be six to seven hundred seats, or as large as this one at a thousand seats. When you give your presentation, typically the audience will be sitting downstairs in the center row of seats. A group of about 100 passengers in your audience is typical. You will have some passengers sit up in the balcony or as far away as they can get. Don't worry about that. If you have a small group of passengers in your audience, perhaps 25 to 50, and they're all sitting in the back, that's not unusual, so don't worry about it. Just focus your attention to the passengers and try to get as much eye contact as you can. This particular theater has a 50-foot screen where your presentations will be projected on. You'll have the opportunity to either be behind a podium, if that's where you're more comfortable, or roam the stage if you're more comfortable with that. The ship will provide a handheld mic or a headset, whichever one you're more comfortable with. Your laptop will be either on a table or on the podium, so stay close to it so you can refer to your slides. You will have to check, because sometimes on the ships when you use a laser pointer pointing at your slides, it won't show up through the projector. Also, all your presentations will be recorded through the ship system for later playback through the closed circuit television. Go ahead and try and use your laser pointer on your first presentation, and then watch it on the television. If the laser pointer doesn't show up, then you'll have to think of another method, such as walking over to your screen and pointing with a finger. Your audience is on vacation. They're here to have a good time. 
they're not following the clock strictly like they would in their workaday world. You will have people wandering into your talks halfway through, 10 minutes in. Doesn't matter. Don't let it bother you. And it may happen halfway through your talk, a large amount of your audience may get up and leave. It's not a reflection on you. There's many other activities going on in the ship. Bingo's a tough one to be up against. They also have wooden horse racing on the ship, which is very popular. So if passengers get up and leave your talk, don't worry about it. Don't take it personally. There's something else for them to do that they consider to be very important. So as an enrichment speaker, what kind of stateroom can you expect? Generally, you'll get an inside stateroom of about 150 to 160 square feet. Typically comes with two twin beds. I've also had them with a queen size bed and a king size bed. If your stateroom comes with two twin beds, a nice chat with the room steward and it'll be converted into a king size bed if that's what you desire. Generally, your stateroom will be inside the crew area behind a door marked crew only. It will be a lot more plain than the general passenger cabins. Sometimes, such as this, my cabin is in a passenger area and not inside the crew area. So I have the 150 square feet to myself. I have a small desk where I can plug in my laptop, get my presentations ready, make sure they're perfect before I present them to the revenue passengers. You'll have a private bathroom as well. Some ships, some cruise lines, you will be inside the crew area and you will have two bunk beds. So just be aware of that. It will be in your letter that you get from the cruise line. It will state that you have an inside stateroom in the crew area with bunk beds. You're wondering what kind of topics you could discuss while you're on board ship. It depends, there's two kinds of enrichment speakers. Destination speakers, which are a dying breed, and special interest speakers. The destination speaker will talk specifically about ports and places the ship is going to be going. As example, if you're headed to Rome, you would talk about shore excursions a ship has to offer in general terms. You could go to the Vatican, you could go to the Tuscan countryside, and you can also talk about specifics. If you're on your own in Rome, you can go to the Vatican, the Colosseum, the Agora, the Forum, the many different things to see and do in Rome. So when a destination speaker, you want to do a lot of research first, get your details correct. If you're directing independent travelers, where do they meet the buses or the trains or taxis? And how much does it really cost? Nothing like a passenger coming back as irate as a wet hen, finding out your prices were way off and they ended up being way overcharged from what they were thinking or they missed connections entirely and got back to the ship much later than they're thinking or didn't even get to their destination at all. Special interest speakers, it all depends on what your specialty is. It could have to do with the cruise or nothing at all to the cruise. I do history and culture. So my talks tend to be on the history and culture and religions of the various ports we go to, not being port specific but country and region specific. Example, on a South Asia cruise such as this, we talk generally about Hinduism, Buddhism, and Islam. Your topics don't even have to have anything to do with the cruise. Aerospace engineers talk about aircraft, how planes fly, differences between jets and props. Alaska cruises, some people talk about glaciers, the physics and the chemistry of glaciers how they move, why they move, how they melt. Anything that could be of general interest to the passengers on board. So think of your specialty and your background and what would be of a general interest to passengers in the 50 to 70 year age group because that's generally who will attend your lectures. A question that you'll be pondering is, well, who is my boss while I'm on board the ship? Ultimately, your boss is the cruise director. But don't be surprised if you never formally meet the cruise director. It's the busiest person on the ship. You will be working for an assistant to the cruise director, such as the deputy cruise director, assistant cruise director, activity director, or someone else on the cruise director's staff. There will be a letter in your stateroom or a message on your stateroom television. 
telling you your basic schedule, who your boss is and title, and when you're going to meet with your boss, generally what happens is the ship gets very busy and chaotic. The afternoon leaving port and the next day. You may not even meet your boss, activities director or deputy cruise director until the second or third day out. As far as a formal meeting, meeting with the rest of the entertainment staff, I've never had one. Sometimes you'll get a written schedule your first day on board ship or it might be the second day. And they will outline your talks, typically five talks on a two-week cruise. It will give you times and places and which topics for each day. As you remember, when you applied for the cruise, you gave them a list of topics to your agent or directly to the cruise line. They will choose which of these topics that they would find interesting to your passengers. Sometimes your introduction letter or note will just say, be at a given venue at a given time for your first talk, and then we'll go from there. Sometimes you'll have a message on your telephone from your, your point of contact on the ship. That's, I'll tell you tomorrow when your next topic's going to be, or they'll refer you to the daily bulletin that comes out on the ship. It gives all the activities for the day. It typically comes out to 7 to 8 p.m. And it's up to you to look on there and see when your talks really are to confirm what you've been told. If you see a conflict between what your point of contact has told you and what's on the daily bulletin, then give a call to your supervisor, your boss, and say, okay, which one is it really? Where do you really want me to be? And which is the correct topic? Remember, while on board as an enrichment speaker, you're a guest of the cruise line. The revenue passengers have priority on everything aboard the ship. If there's a line at the buffet or to get in to some other venue, give preference to the revenue passengers. Don't cut in front of the line, don't hurry, especially in the theaters, don't find the best seats. Take a poor seat and leave the best seats to the revenue guests. This will get you brownie points with the cruise ship crew because they notice you around the ship and they know what you're doing. If you want to be invited back, be kind and generate and concert it of the paying passengers. After all, they're the ones paying for your cruise. Public intoxication is another big deal on the cruise ship. No problem with stopping by one of the lounges or bars and getting your favorite beverage, but don't overdo it. If you choose to overdo it, you can guarantee the cruise line will offer you to disembark at the next available port and you're on your own to find your way home. And dress professionally. Most times the cruise line will tell you, for men, dress slacks, a button-down shirt like a polo shirt or a sport shirt is fine for giving your presentations. Occasionally a cruise line will request that you wear slacks, a sport shirt, and a sports coat. Tie usually being optional. Stick to the dress code. Look and act professional at all times when you're on board the ship, especially when you're up giving your presentations, your talks. Remember, you're representing the cruise ship and what they have to offer, and public relations is part of your job and is very important. Another option of life aboard ship as an enrichment speaker is port calls. Generally, as an enrichment speaker, that'll be your day off. You're welcome to leave the ship, explore the port. However, if a ship is coming into port late, say at noontime, you may be asked to give a talk that morning. So at 9 or 10 a.m., you may be giving a talk while the passengers are getting ready to disembark. Don't worry if your talks have a low attendance on these days. That's one of the scheduling conflicts, part of your competition. And also sometimes you'll arrive in a port early and leave early at noon, one o'clock. On these days, you may be asked to give a talk in the afternoon, 4 p.m., 5 p.m., on a port day. The passengers will be back from their day ashore, but they're gonna be tired and your attendance may be low also because of this. Do not go to the shore excursions desk and say, I want a discount, I want a free shore excursion. That's another way to get guaranteed being asked to leave the ship. They will consider you high maintenance 
and even if you get to finish the cruise, you probably will not be asked to go again. If you'd like to go on a shore excursion, there's nothing wrong with that. And when you go on shore excursions, remember the revenue passengers paid a lot for their cruise. Give them the priority seats on the bus, the nicer seats. Go ahead and sit on the back of the bus. It's not going to hurt you at anything. And when you get to the cool things on shore, to take pictures, to visit, to explore, defer to the revenue passengers. Let them get the first pictures, the best shots. Remember, you're public relations for the cruise line. When you leave the ship and go to port, you will notice a return to the ship by time. That's when all the paying passengers are required to be back on board so the ship can leave in a timely manner. You'll also notice the crew has a return by time. And it's 15 minutes to an hour before the revenue guests. You're required to be back on the ship when the crew is required to be back on. So if your due back time is a half hour before the paying passengers, make sure you're back on board at least a half hour. If you're on a shore excursion that is part of the ship, that is, you book the shore excursion through the ship, whenever it gets back is fine. They know where you are and they know when you're coming back. But be prompt. One of the things that comes attached to your free cruise is gratuities. As you well know, a lot of the members of the ship's crew do not get paid very well, so the cruise line will automatically add gratuities to your account. This could be $12 to $15 a day. Some cruise lines are more generous towards their enrichment speakers, and you do not have to pay for the gratuities, but if you take a guest with you, the guest will need to pay for the gratuities. If your room steward or dining room steward gives you excellent service, feel free to give them an extra tip at the, on the last day of the cruise. Okay.